Never let anybody see you sweat. So I was born in New York City, and I lived there until I was eight years old. I realized that I was a much better talker than I was a listener. I don't know what to say. I just don't like what you're saying. Sorry, Your Honor. I ended up going to law school at Georgetown, and I was a prosecutor for Janet Reno. I loved it, because it was so raw. Were you cheating on her? Yeah, sure. OK. All rise. Our show will be a mixture of education. I think you're misreading the law a little bit. And entertainment. <laughs> My main goal is justice and the law. That's been my legacy and the legacy I hope to continue into the future with the show. Christopher Bradford claims he paid a hefty reward for the return of his puppy after his careless roommate let the dog run off. Devin Largoza says he regrets agreeing to pet sit because the dog is a terror. Mr. Bradford, you are suing Mr. Largoza for a thousand dollars that you believe he owes you because it's his fault your dog escaped. Talk to me, tell me what happened. I moved in with my ex-roommate over the spring um, after a few months, decided to get my own dog, seeing as he had his own dog. Uh, went out and bought a brand new puppy, brought it home, and after a week, under his supervision, as I was off at the office at work, he lost my dog. And I had to pay a thousand dollars reward to the nearest neighbor who found it. Can you tell me why he was in charge of your dog? He was in charge of my dog because I brought a brand new purebred puppy who, in order to be taken into the office where I work, which is dog friendly, had to be given vaccinations. And for the first couple months, we couldn't get all those vaccinations in. So okay. And did he work from home? And yes. Okay. Devin worked from home. And did he agree to, I presume you agreed to watch the dog. Yes, yes I, I did, Your Honor. All right, did, um, you can put the paper down. Sure. Uh, did, were you paying him to do that? Yes, I was paying him $20 a day to look after How did the buttons. dog get loose? The dog got loose because I let him out. Um, it was just like any other, <clears throat> any other day. I let him, out, let him out in the back to relieve himself. I went to the bathroom for a few minutes. To be honest, that particular day, I was a little fed up with Buttons, his dog. And so... Why were you fed up with the dog? That dog, for the past... That first four days that I watched him, he was just a living nightmare. How so? I have evidence that uh, shows the damage that he caused around my place. Okay, had you not been around the dog before you agreed to take care of the dog? No, but... I thought you guys were housemates or roommates. Do you live in separate... Uh, how, how, how does he have a dog that you haven't seen before? He promised me that the dog was going to be easy to take care of, and I, we were good friends. I, I didn't feel like there was a need to, you know, screen the dog to see if I could... Right, you know, but after the first day when the dog... Oh. <laughs> yeah. So he's a chewer and a biter. And, um, so after the first day when the dog... Um, so this is a picture of what, what did the dog destroy there that's all over the floor? That's garbage all over the floor. Um, probably some chewed up socks, I believe. All right, so the dog is a little unruly, I take it. Um, a little bit. And is, a um, you know that by day one. Why don't you tell him, look, this isn't gonna work. You gotta get a dog sitter, I can't do this. I did, but I told him four days after just to give it a little bit more time to see if things might have changed. Yeah, but by the time you told him, the dog had escaped already. Or did you tell him before that? No, I told him before that. When did you tell him? The first time I told him was on July 14th, and then he escaped July 22nd. Okay, so you took care of the dog for a while. I would say so. All right, so when you told him, what did you tell him? Did you tell him, hey, the dog's uh, unruly and I can't handle this, and he said, but you gotta? Like, what, what's that mean? You don't have to do anything. I told him what you got what was bred was not a dog, it was a demon, uh, Your Honor. And you were I, kind of annoyed at him because he got a purebred dog. That yes, I'm not denying, yeah. but he promised me, I only agreed to watch that dog because he said that it would be a piece of cake. In the text that he has, it says, um, he'll be asleep most of the day. And that's what I agreed to. I didn't agree to anything else. On the day that you're taking care of the dog and the dog escapes, you're taking care of the dog. Yes. Right? You would agree to take care of the dog that day. And you were getting paid 20 bucks to take care of the dog that day. Yes. How did the dog escape? The dog escaped. I let him out in the backyard. I went to the bathroom for a few minutes. 
I took a little time for myself. Uh, like I said, um, how long did you have the dog unsupervised in the backyard? Three to five minutes, I'd say, but that's normal. That's, you know. Okay. How did the dog escape? How did the dog escape? When I went back out into the, uh, in the backyard, I noticed that there was a gap in the okay. gate, and I figured that's where he must have escaped from. Okay. Now, but it was a small. You, know, you have a dog as well, right? Yes, but he would never Your have Your dog gone didn't that. escape. No. Your dog is bigger than his dog. Yes. You're on a belly. So, just a moment. So the dog escapes, and you realize the dog escaped, and what do you do? As soon as I figured that he was out in the street somewhere, I called him <clears throat> immediately right after. Coming up on Justice for the People. All I could think of was whether he'd been run over or kidnapped, got back, searched all over the apartment, because clearly this one can't be trusted. And later. I said, I think you've had a little too much to drink. You're making everyone uncomfortable. I think it's about time that uh, you disperse the evening. And he did not appreciate that at all. If you'll be in the Los Angeles area and want to bring your case to court, call 1-888-552-6878. This is Justice for the People with Judge Millian. We're back with the case of Christopher Bradford, who blames his former roommate, Devin Largoza, for his lost puppy. And you told him your dog got loose? Yes. And what did you do to help find the dog? I looked everywhere that I could within the immediate vicinity, but then I felt the rest, you know, I felt it would be best for him to wait for him and, you know, figure out how to proceed. And was he mad when you called him? He was more than mad. I couldn't even get a word to him. Like, I couldn't explain to him did the situation. Did you go home? Yeah. Yes, Your Honor. You Almost did. immediately. Okay. I heard my baby was gone. Okay. And so what did you do? I immediately drove back. All I could think of was whether he'd been run over or kidnapped, got back, searched all over the apartment, because clearly this one can't be trusted. Searched everywhere, searched the garden, went around the garden and the, and the gate and the borders, and then ended up driving around the neighborhood for hours. Did afterwards. you ever find your dog? Yes, so after I did all that, I put up reward posters for $1,000 for the dog. Did you repeat that number? Oh, $1,000, I heard him just fine, and so did you. Go ahead. $1,000, yeah. you heard me. Okay. Uh, and after a few days, a lovely old lady oh, it took gave a few the number days? a call. It oh. took a few days. I was really worried. Oh, I, you must have been heart sick. I was All right. sick to my stomach. All right. So a lady finds him and says what? How she, did she find him? Where did she find him? She said she found him outside her front doorstep, said she How went outside. How far away from you was it? Probably a five, six minute drive. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And how did he look? Was he okay? He was okay. He was bloated. I think he'd been eating a lot of, of trash while he was out. But other than that, in perfect health, How I took him to the How old was this bed. puppy? Two months. And he, he wasn't, like, frenetic and upset mm -hmm. and... He's a special that, boy. That is a resilient puppy who mm -hmm. is, should barely even be weaned if he's only two months old. And he's... Uh, all right, so now the puppy uh, is fine. You pay this nice lady her $1,000, mm -hmm. and she didn't say, oh, no, no, I, I'm just happy that I've... She took your $1,000, and you feel that he has to reimburse you the $1,000 yes. because it's his fault that the dog got loose. Exactly. Your and Honor. your answer to that is? No, absolutely At, why not. Why not? First off, he lied to me. He was irresponsible. Oh, forget about all that. You can't, you can't use that as an excuse because you knew exactly who the dog was and the $20 was green enough she for She didn't you. even know who it the dog was. It doesn't matter. You kept on taking care of the dog instead of saying, no, get a dog sitter. I'm not doing it. So you still have a responsibility to make sure you don't lose the dog. Um, what else have you got? Well. Did you ever agree to pay the $1,000? No. Did, you ever did he ever talk to you and say, hey, I'm going to offer a reward? No. And you need to pay it? He went on his own accord to make that wanted po oh, that missing dog poster. Is that accurate? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, so if um, clearly he was negligent and the dog got out because mm -hmm. he should be watching the dog and he should make sure before you leave a dog loose that they can't scoot out. A little dog is always an issue. You should be looking around to make sure there's no, there are no holes mm -hmm. or whatever else. Your Honor. But Now stop. But Explain to me how 
he is obligated now. What if you had offered a million dollars? Would he have to pay a million dollars? Exactly. In a dream scenario, Your Honor, yes. Okay. Um, the problem is no. Um, let me explain something. There, there is, there has to be a reasonable relationship between your damages and the bad act. When you come to court, what you're saying is that side did me wrong mm. and I'm out X. So if you were to tell me, judge, I had to go to home office depot and pay 40 bucks for photocopying to put these flyers out. I mean, you know what? That's a foreseeable expense. So yeah, pay the guy the 40 bucks. Mm. If, if you were to tell me I had to put an ad in the paper, you know what? That's a foreseeable expense. Give the guy the money for the ad in the paper. Those are reasonably foreseeable consequences of the bad act. The bad act being the negligence of not being careful. You Though, when you decide to give a thousand dollars reward, that may be the best decision you ever made. That may be exactly what got you the dog back. So don't get me wrong. But for me to pin that on him, that has to be a reasonably related, foreseeable consequence of the bad act. Um, you know, his version of this is, hey, somebody, that lady would have returned him to you the minute she found them anyway, because I presume your dog had a, a collar with the number yes, and stuff. Indeed. Right. You know, she, uh, who knows if she even knew about the reward. And so it wasn't necessary for you to make an offer of $1,000, or you could have made an offer of $100, or you could have made an offer of $300, or you could have made... See, you've made... You, sua sponte, made a decision that you were going to make this offer, and that's fine, but that doesn't mean that he is then bound by decisions that you made on your own. So verdict for the defendant and good luck to everybody. All rise. Judge Millian has ruled in favor of the defendant. The plaintiff's claim is denied. The next time, don't get a dog if you can't take care of yourself. I, if I see your face ever again after this. I hope your dog chews your shoes like he did mine. Okay, right. you had your day in court. Exit this way, please. Make sure you grab all of your belongings. Coming up. Because I said, please give me your drink and please leave my home. That was when he jumped back as if I had attacked him. This is Justice for the People with Judge Millian. Lena Grant claims her vintage china was destroyed after a guest drank too much at her housewarming party. Mark Urenda says it was an accident that wouldn't have happened if Miss Grant hadn't tried to snatch his beer. Miss Grant, you are suing Mr. Urenda for $6,476, the value of ch fine china that he broke at your party. How long have you two known each other? I do not know. Mr. Urenda, Your Honor. He was brought as a plus he was, one? He was brought as a plus one to my housewarming party by a friend from work of mine, Cindy. Mr. Urenda, how long have you known Cindy and how is it that you know Cindy? Uh, I actually met Cindy in college. We went to college together so in Arizona. So Yeah. Okay, you're not dating or anything? No, no. Cindy All right, so she dating. takes you to the housewarming party. Um, she takes him to the housewarming party. And what happens? What goes wrong? I had no problem with Cindy bringing a guest. She told me that he was new to town and she wanted to introduce him to people. And I said, absolutely, that's perfectly fine. I wanted him to have a nice time. And throughout the course of the evening, I noticed Mr. Urenda drinking quite heavily. I had an open bar and I noticed him frequenting the bar and always with a different cocktail. I noticed him going up to a lot of my friends and family, a lot of my guests, and he just seemed to be very close. I felt that he was getting a little too familiar with people people were starting to get a little uncomfortable. I pulled him into the foyer area. I asked him politely uh, if he would leave. I said, I think you've had a little too much to drink. You're making everyone uncomfortable. I think it's about time that uh, you disperse the evening. And he did not appreciate that at all. He got very agitated. How, okay, that's a conclusion. I need the facts. What was it he said or did he, that made he, you think he, he was told, agitated? He told me, I am not drunk. And I said, well, I believe that you are. Coming up. So we had a group shot, then we had margaritas, and then I had old fashioned, and I wanted to end it with the beer, so when- Do you always mix like that? Uh, yeah. This is Justice for the People with Judge Millian. We're back with a dispute between Lena Grant and party guest Mark Urenda over decimated vintage China. 
I said, please give me your drink and please leave my home. And he said no again. So I reached out this time because I said, please give me your drink and please leave my home. That was when he jumped back as if I had attacked him, which I did not. I did not lay a finger on him. Were you struggling over him. the glass? I just, I just wanted to go. For, I just did wanted your hand go like this or did you grab the glass? I was reaching for the glass. I wanted okay. him to give me the glass. And then what? He's trying to keep the glass? He, he, he tried to keep it. He jumped back away from me and that was when he knocked into my china cabinet full of my porcelain china that is a family heirloom. It has been passed down from my great grandmother to my grandmother to myself. And I was displaying it on this new display for my housewarming party so my family could see it. Do you have proof of value? I do, yes. Uh, I actually it? had it appraised as soon as I received it. Mr. Urenda, tell me what happened. I, I would say I probably had like about three, four drinks. Once I had my fourth drink, Miss Grant pulled me to the side in her foyer. She kindly asked me if I was drunk and I, I explained to her that I'm not. She might have misunderstood of me being drunk. I'm a pretty clumsy person. And um, I will admit I was drinking because I, I could be awkward around new people, so drinking kind of helps. How use. many drinks did you have? Uh, I would say four, including the, the beer. That, what kind of drink? Uh, I, had a, I had a shot with the group, so we had a group shot, then we had margaritas, and then I had Old Fashioned, and I wanted to end it with the beer, so when... Do you always mix like that? Uh, yeah. What happened then? She tells you, you are drunk, I need you to leave my house. If you're not drunk, and, she, and, and a person says, I want you to leave my house, why don't you say, I'm sorry you feel that way, here's your drink, I'm leaving, can you please tell Cindy to meet me outside? Why wouldn't that be your reaction? Judge Millian's verdict, when justice for the people returns. This is Justice for the People with Judge Millian. I, I was planning on leaving after, but she, um, she aggressively tried to take my beer away from me. So what did she do? Show, show me what she did with your hands, you know, what she uh, did. So she had her hand like this going towards the beer, and she was very aggressive. So when she did that, I stepped back trying to avoid her, and I accidentally bumped into her china cabinet. And broke her 6000 something dollar china, because I'm looking at... At the, at the appraisal of it, it's super rare. Which she forced me into. She, how did she force you into? You decided you didn't want to give up your beer, and so you took the step back and fell into it. She, she had rudely approached me trying to take my so drink. So what? Why didn't you just give her the beer? Um, so I genuinely feel like she, the tone that she came off and she, the tone and how aggressive she Wait, was Wait, but that being. doesn't mean you needed to fall into China and break it. Maybe that's more... Likely uh, a result of four different drinks throughout the night and your level of intoxication as opposed to her going to grab the drink when she has asked you multiple times to leave her house. Dude, you're going to pay her $6,476, verdict for the plaintiff. That is All the most expensive beer you've ever had. All rise. Judge Millian has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The defendant owes $6,476. It was her fault, um, albeit it was a great party, and I do appreciate her having me over, and I never meant to disrespect her home. If you had just apologized, we never would have come to this. This has been a production of Allen Media Group.